When I first learned about the ketogenic diet, my main mentors were Norgad Gaudis and her mentor, Dr. Ron Rosedale. And they were very adamant that protein had to be at bare minimum. Like we're talking 0.8 grams per kilogram, not pound. Like so low and it's mostly fat. I never felt very good doing that. If anything, just nauseous, tired. I could never feel fully keto adapted. Whereas now, like, I'm doing higher protein, plenty of fat, still probably 60 to 70% fat, but the protein just helps so much and I never taste those ketone things on the breath. So I've been measuring my blood glucose and I found some interesting observations. <laughs> So as a vegan, my blood sugar woes continued. Sometimes I would eat a fruit meal and I would feel good and I could go out and I didn't think my blood sugar was really rising that much, but when I started testing it, I could see like eating grapes gave me 13 blood sugars per foot. And I was like, man, that's why I'm so tired. I get super exhausted with high blood sugar. And so like, it just doesn't come down if I eat a tiny meal of like grapes or apples, like not to satiation, and then I'm moving, it'll come down a bit to like 6.4ish. But if those are bananas that I'm eating or mangoes, it raises, it stays up there at like 7.4, if not higher. I can't do the sugar thing, man. So ketogenic is better, but protein, I was curious to see if eating high protein would spike the sugar. It kind of does. It kind of does. So usually when I'm fasted as a vegan, it was always pretty low, my fasting blood sugar at least. It was like 4.6, 4.4, ideal. It just when I started eating, it would terrorize me. So now that I'm eating like high protein, meat-based, my fasting blood sugar is five. It feels elevated to me just because it's higher than it used to be. I don't know, it's not elevated, it's still pretty good, but. It's a little higher. Maybe it would be better if I lowered the protein. I don't know, but I feel so darn good that it's hard to do it. So like after a meal, I measured two hours after uh, like a ground beef fatty meal, salmon, flax oil, ground beef, some green peas. After it was like 5.7 after two hours. So like it probably spiked a little, started coming down reasonable better than my blood sugar on fruit. And yes, I've tried this so many ways on the fruits with like super low fat, so I'm insulin sensitive. It never worked for me to where it would just come down to normal and I'm not starving and having energy fluctuations throughout the day. I know my man Eli from Free Melon Society did a blood sugar test a long time ago. He like drank watermelon juice and was right back down to normal after two hours. That ain't my body. It never works like that. So I don't know what he did after that. If he sprinted up a mountain and did some backflips on the way down, I don't know. That's uh, his story for another day. But for me, protein seems to spike it a bit. So I went a little further. I actually had beef liver, which is like almost no fat, along with a steak. It was just like super high protein meal. And after two hours, it was 6.3. Or was it 6.7 pictures there? It was higher, definitely higher. So like you can overdo it. And I did feel a little tired after that meal. Like it's too much protein. You don't need that much, but you, I feel like I need more than the ketogenic baseline of the Norgid Gaudises of our world suggest. It's just like, I've never felt the magic. I moved. How are you doing? So let me know down below what you feel, my meat-based homies. Do you feel better on higher protein? Because I noticed when I was carnivore years ago, I was feeling pretty good, but then I got scared of protein damaging the kidneys, so I would up the fat to tremendous amounts, and I was exhausted, and it didn't work out for me at all, and the carnivore magic was gone. So it's like, you weigh these things out. I remember my trip to Laos. I was eating raw meat, that was my first mistake, but it was like tenderloin and I had almost no source of fat. Like I didn't bring anything with me. So I remember eating a meal of tenderloin and like there was hardly anything there. All the beef was trimmed of its fat and I 
had no fat source and I was exhausted. Like the whole trip, I was just so tired. And I remember coming back home to Chiang Mai and thinking, I need fat, man. And so I went to get some salmon bellies. Could not believe how much better I felt. So like we need some fat, mostly fat, but you dip too low on that protein and I just, I don't seem to feel the same energy. I didn't realize how tiny I was in the shot. I just reviewed it. I'm like this tall, whatever, that's no problem. I just want to say the benefits of the increased protein is like several fold, not only massive strength and Herculean feats of calisthenics only godlike abilities, satiation. So like eating higher protein, you're satiated, you eat less calories, you should live longer. Whereas the fat, like, do you really satiate yourself? I've heard so many different opinions on what satiates us. It's protein, mostly, and some fat. Some say it's more fat. Others are like, oh, it's fiber. No, I've had so much bloated full bellies and still hungry searching. It's like cashews, I could eat thousands of them. So come on now. Protein, satiation, weight loss, strength, longevity, potentially, and kidney disease. Those are, those are good times. And it's more delicious, more nutrients in the protein part than the fat part. Less cholesterol. That could be a thing. That, that could totally be a thing. So protein is good times. And it's like your sugar might be a little elevated. So what? That means I have energy to use. That's fun for me. I like energy. I'll leave. Back to the tiny guy. He's tiny. You also don't lose as much electrolytes when your protein's up there because you're still producing insulin to get the protein into your cells. So it's like when you're on ketogenic, then you have to up the salt to crazy amounts. People are recommending like a tablespoon of salt a day and it ends up insane. I don't know, like you could balance it, but you don't need to do that. You could technically go salt free on your carnivore type diet if it's high in protein. I've seen some of them do it and I might be one of them, I'll tell you that much. So you should, in theory, be more hydrated because you have insulin now, you're good to go. You're not like suppressing that aldosterone hormone that holds on to the sodium. You can hold on to whatever you have. And then you just, if you're craving salt, okay, you have a couple olives here and there, come on. So I don't know if I'm burning sugar because I'm eating so much protein, I'm turning the excess into sugar because I don't taste the ketones on my breath ever but I feel sustained and happy to where I can eat just one meal a day. I eat around 2 p.m. So like I've been doing a bunch of stuff all morning. I've made a couple videos. I hiked up a mountain. I have all the energy I would ever need from protein. I doubt it. I think I'm burning fat, but like a, that little extra bit of glycogen storage from the protein is good. I just, I do worry about the nitrogenous waste byproducts the ammonia, excess ammonia, but according to the pee drinkers, ammonia is amazing. I stopped doing that like six months ago or something. I just wasn't seeing any benefits. I'm like, I'm just drinking pee with no benefits. What's the point of that? So I stopped, but like they say, oh, ammonia is the most healing substance on earth. So maybe it's healing my kidneys. I don't know, but are my creatinine levels going to rise up in the EGFR? I'm worried, but like I feel good. So how could this be bad? That's what I wonder. Like if everything improves and I'm just like, this is great, fantastic. Why would I worry about a blood test that might say something? EGFR is low. Maybe that's what you want. I doubt it. Oh, that was spiky. You plants are always trying to kill me. So rude, so rude. You pretend to be nice, but you're not. So what do you think? What do you do? Super high protein, super high fat. I've seen some carnivores like literally deep frying beef tallow. And I just like, I cannot be a part of your life. I'm sorry, you're deep frying beef fat. And like, I'm healthy now cause I'm not vegan. It's like deep frying anything is not healthy. Air fry the damn thing, maybe, I, I don't know, man. So it's hard to feel a part of this world who's just like bacon, bro. Have you tried bacon? I'm like, yeah, I've tried it. I used to throw up almost every time I ate it. Pork is stupid. It's unclean to us. I don't eat shrimp, shellfish, nothing without fins and hawks. Hawks wasn't the word. Scales. I eat hawks sometimes. I'll leave. 
How you doing? You thumbing up the video? Hmm. That's an interesting choice. Thumbs down. If your source of protein is butter, there's only micrograms worth of it in there, and it's the wrong kind. It's casein, highly toxic to most people. Just because, oh, I killed the plant. I am sorry, good sir. Well, that just came right off there. Butter is stupid. Flax oil is fun. I get my protein from flax oil myself. I'm gonna leave. How you doing? You subscribing for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. We did well. This path doesn't end, it just goes down a cliff. I'm gonna just return to my camera.